Alright, uh, Assalamualaikum and good morning everyone. So welcome to another session of Peek into my class, July 2021 edition. Um, this is the second session. We have the first session um, earlier in July. Um, I'm not sure. Is it 16, I think? All right. So today we have uh, three speakers. Uh, first is Dr. Shahidra Khalil from API. Second, we have Dr. Abdul Wahadi from Faculty of Science. And last but not least, we have Dr. Chong Wuli from Faculty of Arts and Social Science. Um, so hopefully you all will benefit um, from this session. So can we invite Dr. Shahidra for the first speaker? Let's see uh, my slide. Uh, yes, Doctor. Okay, okay. Uh, thank you, uh, Puan Umu and Adek for inviting me. Uh, okay, good morning to uh, the speakers for today's hearing session, uh, Dr. Abdul Hadi, Abdullah Al Hadi, and Dr. Chong, and also uh, to all lecturers who join us today for peek into my class session for July, uh, the second uh, session. For July. So I'm from the Department of Peak and Usul Academy of Islamic Studies, University of Malaya. So I want to stress that I'm not expert uh, in uh, because I'm not from Faculty of Education, but uh, I just uh, today I just like uh, to share some of my practices in uh, online in conducting online classes. So uh, firstly, uh, my teaching experiences. Uh, I would like to share that I start. I started my teaching career uh, in 2006, yeah, here. I started teaching uh, for kindergarten uh, children, students. So uh, this uh, was in 2006 when I was in my final year uh, semester uh, in my bachelor degree in UM. So uh, during that uh, semester, I just uh, allocate the whole semester for uh, writing my FYP and I didn't receive my uh, what PTPTN, so I work in kindergarten as a teacher. So what I learned from teaching in, in kindergarten is that, you know, the content or the syllabus is the is basic, very basic, A, B, C, 1, 2, 3, Alif, Bata and so on. but uh, it requires a lot of strategies, you know, and creativity. How to engage uh, the student, the children, uh, uh, and retain their focus in the class. So uh, it is different when I uh, start my career in UM. I started as a research assistant in 2006 also because I just uh, taught at the kindergarten for uh, about five months, yeah, January to May, and then June I start working at UM as um, a research assistant before I graduate. So uh, I started uh, my teaching career afterwards uh, in 2008, I think, uh, as uh, in the tutorship program. At that time, uh, I work as tutor and I start teaching uh, a lot of uh, various subjects in uh, API. So uh, until now and then I uh, become a slap slide fellow and then now senior lecturer uh, in APM. So uh, my experience uh, in teaching, uh, I teach uh, undergraduate and also postgraduate. For uh, undergraduate actually it range from the first year student as you can see here the code is 1, IIX1 Okay, and then also the second year and the third year, and also postgraduate uh, student. So this is the picture. Okay, if you can see my mouse, I think you can see my mouse also. Okay, this is the my postgraduate uh, student. Okay, the challenges uh, I face in uh, teaching postgraduate, as you can see, we have, uh, you know, a student from various background. So I have Arabians, one, two, three who they don't understand except in Arabic language only. But I also have in this class uh, a student from German who doesn't understand anything except in English. And the majority in this class, as you can see, is from uh, Malaysia and Indonesia who I know they will appreciate if I can uh, deliver my class in Malay. But uh, that is the challenges, okay, the content or the syllabus is uh, difficult and also 
the teaching uh, strategy that I have to implement is also, uh, I think it's very challenging. I have to think how to deliver uh, my class successfully and effectively. Uh, luckily, uh, for um, uh, postgraduate uh, uh, level, I just teach uh, this subject for two weeks only because it is a shared subject. Okay, so my turn is just two weeks. So, uh, yeah, until now, I have to think how to teach them, okay, with various uh, three languages at a time. Uh, until now, I'm still thinking, okay, and I'm still uh, experimenting new strategies and methods yeah, in delivering the class. Okay, it started from, uh, actually, before uh, MCO, we already uh, uh, implement blended learning in UM. So, that is a good training for us. Uh, to use an uh, online uh, platform to teach our students. So this is the picture of my class uh, for Amalan Fatwa, IID 2001. Actually for Amalan Fatwa, I just handled the tutorial only. Okay, so uh, the main uh, subject that I teach uh, solely uh, without sharing with other lecturers is Fiqhul Jinayah and Pengajian Hudud. Okay, the other I shared with other uh, lecturer and also uh, I conduct tutorial. So that is basically uh, uh, a little bit of my experiences that make me realize that uh, different level of education need, uh, requires different strategies. And uh, also the different background of student also uh, and force us to, you know, think creatively how to deliver our subject or contents effectively. Okay, so that the student benefit uh, from the class. So what I'm going to share today is uh, from this perspective. I want to share uh, what are my five priorities yeah, when I conduct my class, uh, especially online classes. Uh, thanks to Puan Umu, actually I never list down all these priorities before this, but when when Umu asked me to share uh, in this sharing session today, I start I started thinking, okay, what what why I do uh, such uh, kind of strategy? Why I deliver like this? And then I come out and here come uh, the list. The first one, uh, the, my uh, I think maybe it works it works for me because uh, I will show you also the feedbacks from my student. Okay, uh, and. Maybe uh, if it is good, maybe you can, uh, all of you can uh, try to implement in your class as well. Okay, but uh, please, uh, as I said before, different faculty or different background students may need different uh, strategy. Okay, uh, it is not, uh, I say that this is good for all. Okay, so uh, the first one, understanding and empathy. Second one, creativity. Third one, clarity. Uh, fourth, interactivity and five, uh, flexibility. Okay, so the first one, uh, see understanding and empathy. So why? Why we have to understand our student? Actually, this is not, uh, we have to understand our student not only uh, during uh, remote learning, okay, online learning only. Okay, in the traditional class that we have before, prior to COVID-19 also, we have to understand our student. That is the first step. Okay. And when we are facing with uh, MCO, we have to stay at home, remote learning. So we don't see, we don't know our student. So we, uh, this, uh, this, this uh, understand and uh, empathize, have uh, empathy to our student is uh, very important. Okay, uh, online classes are very different from traditional classrooms, so they need a very different approach. Since our students are not physically present, their needs are different, and we need to support them by putting ourselves in their shoes. So the first one, why you want to understand the student perspective? Because we have to use that understanding to guide our action in planning, our uh, teaching delivery, and our strategies, okay? Uh, so what I uh, did is I want to know their personal details, their background. Okay, I use Padlet. And then I want to identify their problems and challenges. So I disseminate uh, questionnaires, okay, uh, using MS forms. And then I also want to know their basic knowledge about the subjects. So I did entry survey. Entry survey, I did 
uh, at the beginning of uh, all my uh, class. Okay, so let's see how I do uh, that. Okay, the first one is to get to know uh, my student. I use Padlet. So I create a specific uh, Padlet just for the student to introduce themselves. Okay, so they get to know uh, their friends. Actually, this uh, Padlet, uh, I use it for undergrad, uh, for all subjects, for all subjects. So, as you can see, the foreigners are for the postgraduate students. And uh, and uh, this one, Tahun Kedua ni, Fiqh uh, Al-Jinayah. Okay, a plan all. So, they can uh, also get uh, know their friends yeah? because uh, especially during the uh, remote learning they don't engage with friends yeah? maybe they know uh, their friends from uh, the same department but they don't know uh, friends uh, from other departments so this is the platform that I uh, provide to them to interact uh, with them okay Second one, I try to identify the student's capacity for online class and it, uh, as I said, uh, their problems and challenges uh, using Microsoft Forms. So this one I did uh, before, uh, during the first MCO. Okay, PKP 1, around April, just last year, before UM did this. So I did this for my student because I want to know because maybe uh, if you am uh, did this uh, questionnaire, it is general, but I want to do specifically what uh, are my student, uh, what were my student problems and challenges. So I create MS form. Actually, this is my first trial using Microsoft form. So I experimenting it. Eh? I try to do it and then I disseminated uh, the link to the students and, and get uh, the feedback. So this is my first trial and it it was a success. So, Alhamdulillah, I get 70 responses and okay, the important things I want to know is they are repeating, if they were repeating this class. Actually, if I'm not using Microsoft Form in my traditional class in lecture hall, I will also ask, you know, if there are students who repeating this subject, who fail this subject last semester. So, I went, okay, here are the there are four students repeating uh, the subject. So I have to pay attention more to them and I try to simplify uh, my delivery for the student to understand. So this uh, uh, the example of the question that I asked them. So here I can see the response that they, some of them have uh, access melalui Wi-Fi sepanjang hari. Okay, they can have online classes at any time. They have uh, internet access. 24 only. But access melalui mobile data terhad uh, tertentu, not uh, all day long. Okay, they have uh, limited access to uh, internet using mobile data 29. So, okay, the majority, I can say uh, not majority, but yeah, uh, majority, they don't have the capacity uh, to commit to live uh, class uh, asynchronously, uh, asynchronously. So, I get this from uh, the feedback. So I use this to plan my uh, class uh, using the BR0006. Okay, in UM, you have that BR0006. Uh, so I plan accordingly. Okay, uh, which week I uh, uh, set for live, uh, face to face, synchronous, and when I set the class uh, as uh, asynchronously. Okay, so uh, other than that, I also ask a uh, question like a uh, problem that they face, yeah, uh, according to online, uh, full online classes. Okay, starting from this last year. Okay, so uh, among the responses that I get, access internet yang terhad kerana berada di kawasan yang kurang capaian untuk mobile data. Okay, uh, internet bergantung kepada faktor cuaca, perlu keluar ke bandar untuk mendapatkan access internet. Okay. And uh, among the response also, saya nak pulang ke UM tapi sangat risiko buku fake jenayat saya ada orang pinjam. Okay, selain itu, uh, untuk membicarakan assignment bersama rakan agak susah. Okay, jadi uh, because of this, uh, all these responses, I uh, respond to them. So in my Padlet, I open the tempahan for buku 
pick Alcina yeah, and I become uh, an online seller, book seller. So I get the book for them and I post to them. Okay. So they just uh, uh, comment. Okay. At my padlet who wants to get the book and I will post to them. Okay. Uh, to their kampung lah. Okay. Next, I also ask, uh, I try to identify the student class preferences, how they would like me to uh, deliver in uh, the, the lecture. So, these are the responses. Okay, 4.4. Okay, actually I using the uh, Likert scale. So, 4.24 meaning agree. 5 totally agree. Okay, 4 agree. So, uh, most of the student, okay, the highest response uh, agree uh, from the student is that I uh, conduct the class asynchronously. I record the slide uh, with my explanation. Uh, and then I put it at spectrum so they can uh, see and watch it uh, at any time. They have access to internet. Okay, this is the response that I get at MCO first because actually I didn't do a, a questionnaire now but uh, there are students uh, in this semester, you know, now is uh, MCO 3.0 some students said that they want more live uh, session, live lecture. So actually, their circumstances uh, change. Uh, okay, the, 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 my mistake is that I didn't uh, ask for every semester. This is, uh, uh, I did the uh, questionnaire and I asked the student at the first MCO only. So maybe uh, nowadays students uh, have a uh, per, uh, internet access uh, better than before so they now they like to have that uh, online class because maybe uh, so many classes uh, are conducted uh, asynchronously so a student feel less motivated because they didn't don't uh, meet the lecturers and students so now they are demanding to have uh, live online classes Okay, so entry survey, I mean, uh, entry survey I did uh, for every um, class. I just want to know basic, uh, what their basic knowledge about the subject before they learn the subject. So I ask this question. This is for Fik Jenayah class. And also I ask persoalan yang bermain di fikiran saya mengenai Fik Al Jenayah. All their question, I take note. And then at the end of the semester, I will ask them. Uh, all their question answered in the class. Or if I didn't answer or didn't, didn't find the answer, then I will uh, uh, give the answer at the end of the semester, okay? Uh, during the last uh, uh, week of the uh, course, yeah? I hope that they, uh, all their questions answered in the class. Okay, uh, throughout the class, uh, the 14 weeks, I also uh, help the student to understand themselves better. Okay, so uh, when I uh, uh, set the class uh, asynchronously at certain weeks, I also provide them with activities. Okay, in the early, uh, what's your learning style in the first or second week? I ask them to do the quiz and then actually I use this to uh, group them. Okay, in the tutorial based on their learning style. Okay, visual uh, student, uh, one class. To auditory student, so, uh, the, the other class uh, for tutorial. Okay, and also at the, this questionnaire I just put and they have to do and then they have, they have to upload the result in their e-portfolio. So, I will share and show you, okay, how they do that. Okay, this is the feedback from the student. Okay, some of them, Actually, saya baru tahu saya merupakan seorang visual. They never know their learning style. Okay, this is important because especially during the online class, they have to know how uh, uh, the best strategy for them to learn. Whether they have to apa, visual uh, student uh, uh, understand better. Okay, using diagrams, pictures and all that. Auditory, they have to listen. They listen, listen, listen to my recording and all that. Tactile, uh, they need to uh, do activities so that they understand the uh, subjects, uh, the syllabus better. So, uh, ada, uh, saya merupakan seorang visual learner. Jadi, saya lebih mudah mengingati dan memahami satu perkara yang membaca dan melihat. Okay, so student now know their learning style. 
And also this is feedback semasa awal kuliah saya diminta menjawab ujian malinintas yang menggambarkan seorang pelajar itu adalah auditory visual atau audio. Secara tidak langsung membuatkan saya lebih tahu dengan cara pembelajaran saya sendiri. Kemudian semasa mendaftar, okay, mulanya akan dibahagikan mengikut kumpulan daripada malinintas namun tak dapat dilaksanakan, yes. Uh, sebab ada beberapa sebab lah, mostly because the student uh, schedule cannot I cannot uh, do the uh, categorization or grouping based on the auditory uh, the, their learning style because they are their schedule is tight so they uh, normally they will uh, the the tutorial group based on their department because they have the same schedule okay bukan itu sahaja pelajar juga untuk, uh, diminta untuk menandakan tabiat kebiasaan pelajar dan hasil dari itu saya dapat melihat tabiat kebiasaan saya semasa belajar dan dapat memperbaiki lagi kebiasaan belajar saya. So this is how I motivate them actually uh, indirectly. Okay so they know uh, their performance and they will try to do better. Okay the second one uh, creativity. Okay creativity is intelligent having fun. Who said that we are in uh, edu uh, in university cannot having fun in class? Okay. Creativity is experimenting, uh, growing, taking risks, uh, breaking rules, making mistake and having fun. Okay. So when I uh, uh, when I join uh, classes uh, organized by ADEC, actually I have uh, okay I transform some of my uh, teaching style uh, and also my uh, assessment to student okay uh, what my transformation I want to share for you uh, to you is uh, in my formative assessment so I realized that formative learning is the process of teaching students how to set goals for their learning to identify their growth toward those goals to evaluate the quality of your works and to identify strategies to improve. So actually before this in the traditional class and um, previously what I did uh, was just presentation, quiz class test and writing assignment or case study for all my subject. But after that, after I understand this that the the, um, the formative assessment is to help student to uh, improve their understanding not to compare them their performance okay uh, okay uh, to other student against that of uh, uniform standard i change okay my formative assessment in my class so especially during the uh, uh, online class so i think um, so, student may have uh, some difficulties to uh, understand the subject uh, better so i avoid quiz or class test because this is uh, but i change it with e-portfolio and learning reflection and then uh, yeah. case study also, book writing project, uh, this is collaborative learning. Uh, so book writing project, they uh, they learn to collaborate with uh, the team members larger in larger group. Okay, so one tutorial have only two groups. So uh, one group uh, consists of uh, approximately 12 members yeah. like that. So I will show you how I do it. Uh, so also the summative assessment, okay, I consider the difficulties uh, for student uh, during the MCO and online uh, learning. So I change some of my assessment. So multi uh, multiple choice true and false, yes, uh, I retain it and then I maintain it. I say I uh, change it into short answer and case study, I maintain it. Okay, this is an example of the student's portfolio or what I said, uh, learning reflection and student portfolio. So, uh, they can, uh, I uh, teach them how to use Padlet and uh, advanced student, they oh. did in uh, Google site. Okay, they know how to do in Google site, they do. Actually, uh, for student e-portfolio, I give them freedom okay, to explore and um, do uh, the assignment yeah. creatively. So basically uh, there are four things that I ask from them, introduction uh, about themselves and all the learning style, the quizzes about their teaching, uh, learning habits and all in this column and then learning reflection. 
Okay, uh, learning reflection for the topics that I send them. Okay, in week in the week that I send them, and then learning experience. Okay, yeah. because I want to get feedbacks from them, and this is the yeah. last analysis gadget case. Okay, they just put here. Okay, all uh, centralized in their padlet. Okay. Some of uh, the assignment done individually, uh, such as introduction, of course, about themselves individually, learning reflection individually, learning experience, they just share what they feel, okay, the feedback uh, for my improvement. And analysis case, uh, case analysis uh, by group, okay, they can discuss with their friends and then they put uh, in their uh, padded respectively. Okay, uh, these are among the feedbacks I got uh, from the student uh, on my portfolio and uh, and learning reflection. So, uh, contohnya, kaedah yang kreatif dan menarik di mana setiap pelajar diminta membuat padlet bagi memudahkan pelajar-pelajar untuk menulis semula apa yang mereka fahami berdasarkan setiap sub, uh, tajuk yang diajar online learning. So, uh, normally uh, the learning reflection i assign them when i uh, did the asynchronous class so they listen to my recording slide recording and then they do reflection okay padlet uh, lebih kepada diary bagi saya that is the concept okay untuk saya update topik-topik kuliah dan tutorial serta tugasan yang diberikan oleh pensyarah dan ia memudahkan kerja saya dari semua aspek okay uh, untuk mengulang kaji dan sebagainya so uh, there are some student who said that this is the first experience uh, for them. Uh, ini merupakan uh, kali uh, pertama uh, saya melakukan uh, tugasan refleksi dalam medium padlet ini. Uh, saya merasakan uh, saya bebas untuk menulis mengikut kreativiti saya and yes, I allow them. If they ask me how I want to do it, I say it's up to you. Okay, uh, you can do creatively. Some of them write in English, some of them write in Malay but none of them write in Arabic. Okay, uh, Never mind, but this subject is actually in Arabic. Okay, so my learning experience penggunaan padlet ini juga merupakan pengalaman baru. Ini pertama kalinya saya tahu. So uh, by sign uh, signing them this uh, uh, task, it portfolio actually I also uh, try to expose them uh, to the you know technology and all that. Okay, they found it uh, interesting because this is the first experience and they, they never experienced it before. So, they get excited. Okay, uh, alternatif kepada kaedah pembelajaran sebegini sangat meraihkan golongan muda yang sangat dekat dengan teknologi. Di samping dapat meraihkan kreativiti pelajar serta mengasah diri untuk uh, menjadi graduan yang celik. Uh, okay, so that are among the responses that I got from student. So also, uh, teacher-centered learning to students, uh, student-centered learning. So I try to uh, give more uh, autonomy or freedom for students, you know, in uh, in my class because uh, they will learn better if they want to know what they want to know, okay? That is student-centered learning, okay, conceptually. So, uh, for example, in Kajian case, okay, the assignment for Kajian case, I give them three uh, Kajian case for them to do. So, I give the freedom for them to find what is the case that they want to do. Okay, previously, uh, I am more to uh, teacher-centered learning that I provide all case and it's not, it's not easy because I have, I have to find the case uh, and then I give them. But now it's easier for me and the student also enjoy. They find the case and they do what the case that they like. Okay, uh, for example, uh, case bunuh ke, uh, case uh, merompak ke apa ke, it's up to them. They, they find themselves and then they analyze it. Okay, also uh, uh, this is an example uh, of my instruction in Spectrum. Okay, then I also uh, implemented inquiry and research based, uh, based learning. Uh, learning through... Uh, inquiry. Okay, that are the terms used to describe method of teaching and learning based on self-directed uh, inquiry or research by the student. Okay, EBL provides a strongly student-centered approach to teaching and learning and teaching student learning experience using the fun activity. How I do it? 
from my pengajian hudud uh, class. Okay. Yeah. So I asked them in the second week or the first week yeah. during tutorial, their task is to ask five question. Is student ask five question uh, in my padlet? So they just ask, okay, regarding hudud lah, uh, because the subject is hudud. So after that, all the students have uh, post five questions. I ask them to um, divide into two groups, large group, because the staff is, uh, they have to uh, write a book, FAQ. Uh, okay, that is the concept, FAQ book on uh, Hudud. But they have to team, they have to analyze, they have to identify, categorize the question. Whether the question is about the concept, then kesalahan Hudud, or uh, about the implementation of hudud pelaksanaan. So they do that themselves. They ask the question and I ask them to find the answers based on what they learn, okay, throughout the uh, semester in 14 weeks. So this is uh, the example of the books, okay, the contents from this book, the blue wine book, okay. Uh, minum Arab, bagaimanakah pembuktian untuk apa-apa? Jelaskan khilaf ulama. This question are from their question. Okay, so they have to answer. Okay, so I give them the uh, guideline uh, using the UM Press, the UM Press uh, uh, format. Okay, UM Press, uh, ada prakata, there is prakata, introduction and bibliographic glossary and index. I use the slide from the UM Press, I give that, uh, I give the slide to them, so they follow how to publish a book. Okay, this one, uh, kesalahan uh, pengajian hudud is for third year student. So, I didn't do this in uh, for uh, my fake ajinaya, the second year student or the first year student. I use this uh, strategy or this method uh, for third year student lah, basically. Okay, so the third one is clarity. Okay, the first one that uh, I have a uh, uh, platform, main platform, okay, for student to get information about the subject. So I use Spectrum, okay, to provide information on the weekly topics and activities, whether it is uh, we will having uh, live uh, online class or asynchronous or asynchronous or whatsoever, I put in Spectrum. Okay, the second one I use Padlet, okay, I have my teaching uh, uh, portfolio, uh, uh, e-portfolio Padlet. Uh, so that's for discussion uh, and further information. Uh, on learning tool, I upload it here. So I think it's uh, easily, it is easier to communicate in Padlet. Uh, so I, I can respond uh, the student comments uh, easily. And also MSTM, okay, I did uh, the lecture and tutorial here in MSTM and also record. So a student can uh, access to the recordings at any time they want. If they don't uh, present, uh, they are absent. Uh, for uh, ulang kaji lah uh, after that. Okay, the submission of student tasks and carry marks are also centralized here and in MS team and I will show you. Okay, this is a uh, uh, print screen of my apa namanya? spectrum. Okay, I start with maklumat khusus and penilaian uh, bertulisan. Uh, so, all about the course, yeah? what students need to know, maklumat khusus and then the uh, apa, uh, the assessment, pemetangan, 10 marks and then portfolio uh, and then pembelajaran kajian kes, 30 marks. Uh, so, I provide them with the, what the meaning of uh, e-portfolio and the example, how to write, short guide, uh, I put all here and then also panduan. So if they don't understand, I provide them with a uh, video, okay, which I upload at YouTube so they can watch through the link that I provided here. And also scenario semak portfolio belajar, okay, so that they can uh, clearly know how to do it, okay. So after that, I also uh, put the e-attendance sepanjang semester for kuliah and I have four tutorials for this subject all here. So they don't have to go to every week. Uh, so everything is here. Okay. Week 1 until week 14. And then uh, only I start with the minggu 1 and then minggu 2 uh, whether it is uh, synchronous uh, kuliah bersemuka contohnya. 
And then uh, yang mana yang tak bersemuka hmm. like this, I state clearly here. Okay, to help student uh, understand better. Hmm. Okay, so this is uh, the screenshot of my portfolio, hmm. teaching portfolio. Previously, I uh, create uh, one padlet for each subject. But I think it's uh, difficult for me to maintain and to see all uh, the students' response. So, uh, started from last semester, I think, or maybe uh, uh, when the MCO start, started. So, I create one, only one Padlet for all the subjects that I uh, teach. So, this is the teaching plan and uh, tools. So, where I put all the uh, my YouTube, okay, how they want to create Padlet, I teach them and also a little bit about myself here and everything. Learning tools here. Uh, this is Fikir Jenayat, Pengajian Hudud, Pengajian Pengajian Syariah, Amalan Fatwa and this uh, one for uh, reflection and feedback. So I uh, divide uh, all this distinct, uh, distinctly uh, to help the student uh, better. Okay, then uh, my MS team. Okay, this is an example for Amalan Fatwa. I use Amalan Fatwa as an example, as an example today because I only have one tutorial for Amalan Fatwa because Amalan Fatwa is uh, elective, uh, apa, elective jabatan only. So, only student from my department take uh, the class. So, only one tutorial. So, it's easy to show uh, what uh, I have here. Okay, compared to Pek Al Jinaya, I have four tutorials and okay, I have to screenshot many pages. So, tutorial in the files, I upload everything about the pembentangan pelajar. Okay, when uh, they present all the recordings, you have to upload here. Okay, because sometimes students uh, cannot use uh, MS Team. When they have uh, problems, uh, they cannot, uh, maybe uh, some of them uh, familiar with uh, Google Meet. I allow them to use Google Meet, but whatsoever, the recording must be uploaded here after afterward. So, uh, other student can refer their presentation here. And then, penilaian e-portfolio, uh, all their e-portfolio, they put here. The links of uh, portfolio, uh, yeah, pautan portfolio, they uh, list here. So that everyone can uh, access to their portfolio to learn from them and also to evaluate, evaluate them. Because in my class, uh, the student evaluate student. It is peer assessment, not me, who evaluate the portfolio. But after all, I will check and sometimes I reduce the mark or sometimes I add the marks. Okay, and also uh, see uh, the portfolio. Okay, after the evaluation by the students. And penilaian kertas kerja, they submit the kertas kerja here. Uh, rakaman guest lecture, okay, because we have two guest lectures for this subject. Uh, this semester is here, so you can see. Kehadiran kuliah amalan fatwa is, um, I give the student the opportunity to uh, do correction. Okay, sometimes they were submit that they forget to record their attendance in spectrum. So I said never mind, okay. In the mid semester, I generate all the attendance. And I put it in uh, Excel forms and then, you know, present, absent and so on. If the student, mm, actually they present, uh, they attend the class, but they forget to uh, record attendance, they may change, okay? Uh, okay, they may change uh, their status here. So, this is the final kehadiran kuliah, which I will upload later in the e-filing, okay, for this subject. And then markah pembentangan, okay, uh, my subject is very clear. They know their performance. So after their uh, presentation, uh, I will do uh, the, their marks, I will put here. So they know their marks, okay. Also, uh, this markah penyayang bertubusan, power, okay, okay. This is perbincangan and pembentangan where they register for the topics eh, to be presented. Okay, uh, so in other than that, clarity means that you have to give clear instruction and guidance for students. Okay, this is an example from my e, uh, teaching portfolio. Uh, I provide them with panduan penyediaan e-portfolio. And then, actually, it's not me only who give them in, uh, guidance or demonstration. Okay, some of them, I asked Nasfa Noor because she did the 
portfolio in Google site. I don't know how to use it. Actually, I've learned but I forget. So, I asked her, uh, Naswa, can you please uh, demo, uh, do a simple demonstration how to create a Google site uh, for uh, portfolio. And then she agreed and she did this. She uploaded uh, into uh, her YouTube. I share this in my, um, uh, in my Padlet. So other students may benefit from uh, Naswa also. Okay, and also this one from Ashita Jafri. I asked her, cara membuat nota menggunakan aplikasi OneNote because she used that. Uh, so I uh, put it in my Padlet. Uh, okay, this one also I put in my Padlet. Okay, so this is the clear rubrics for self and peer assessment. As I said before, I asked them to self uh, assessment, to do self assessment and also peer assessment. Actually, uh, it's, uh, it have many pages, but this is some of the example, uh, the screenshot of the uh, uh, borang penilaian lah. Or I see senarai semak portfolio belajar. This one is for amalan fatwa subject. So this one, if you can see the red one is my, I reduce the mark. <laughs> okay, the student evaluate their friends. Okay, and then I look again and maybe uh, there are two uh, pemurah sangat and then maybe I see oh maybe uh, I I think I'll put the marks that I, I uh, think uh, suitable okay so this is senarai semak portfolio untuk amalan fatwa this one is uh, amalan fatwa okay A, B, C, D uh, for task for uh, the student so this is the example for the A eh tugasan minggu 3 A ni Okay, so this one. So the student just uh, take yeah, whether the uh, their friends got uh, baik, baik, baik or memuaskan and then uh, total the marks and put it here. This is an example, not the, the same, the same and yeah. Okay, so this one is for fake Aljinaya, uh, senarai semak fake Aljinaya. So the student know what they have to do because I, uh, I give them, I provide them this. Okay, this is week two, what you have to do. Okay, you have to do gambar dan maklumat asas belajar, introduction kan. My learning style, test result, you have to do. And then also in the second week, they have to uh, do reflection on the topic in week one and week two about the concept jenayah dalam perundangan Islam dan unsur-unsur penting jenayah. That's all for second week because I did uh, the lecture uh, asynchronously at this time. And then uh, the week uh, at week five, what? Catatan lima isi penting daripada video Arab uh, from a uh, link uh, from YouTube. So they do uh, in the second column. Okay, learning reflection. Uh, uh, yang apa? Learning reflection. And then what? Uh, at the same week, minggu lima, kajian case bentuk-bentuk perbuatan jenayah. Define their own case and then analyze and put in the uh, fourth column, uh, kajian case. This is a very simple uh, we, I think they can use Padlet. Uh, so I uh, ask them to do at least four columns so I can clearly see their works. Okay. Uh, and also, okay, this is an example for column dua, reflexi topik pembelajaran untuk uh, for big aljinaya subject. Okay, this one. So we have uh, second week, fifth week, ninth week. Okay, untuk reflexi pembelajaran, three tasks. So I ask and the student have to evaluate their friends, yeah. Okay, whether pelajar melaksanakan refleksi bagi uh, dua tajuk, actually tiga tajuk lah yang ditugaskan. Yes, sangat tinggi. So, they evaluate uh, their friends, yeah. So, they give mark 10, I give mark 9 only because I think, okay, this is not the truth, yeah, not sangat tinggi lah. Okay, refleksi yang dilakukan merangkumi cadangan solusi terhadap masalah semasa, okay, no. I amend the marks, okay, in the red one. So, they got nine, okay, for learning reflection. Actually, when I implement uh, e-portfolio and learning reflection, uh, student gets better grade than the previous uh, assessment uh, quiz, yeah? Because quiz, especially for subject in Arabic, they, you know, get, they have problem. Many of them, uh, you know, their grade is low. So, I change uh, into this kind of assessment, uh, they perform better. Okay, so this is just the feedbacks. I don't think we have time to read all, but maybe one, I think. Ha, kita tengok yang ni lah. Ini, ini. 
Okay, what she says is that Okay, tengok ni lah. Pada awalnya saya sedikit kekok dan lambat untuk faham penggunaan Padlet. Okay, this is new experience for them. I expose them to Padlet. Saya merasakan Padlet ini sedikit berat untuk digunakan. Tapi selepas diberi panduan menggunakannya secara terperinci oleh doktor, saya kemudiannya dapat menggunakan dengan baik. Okay, what I want to emphasize here is that clarity is very important for student. Okay, because online classes is very difficult for them. They don't meet us. They don't, you know, uh, yeah, I also uh, reply to their WhatsApp but sometimes limited lah, okay. So, they, how I uh, overcome the problems is by giving them clear instruction and guidance. So, it will, it's very helpful uh, to them. Okay, so uh, the fourth one is interactivity. Okay, a common concern is feeling disconnected in online learning. We don't want learners to feel like they are engaging with a computer. They are engaging with each other, with you, with content. So interactivity is very important in online classes especially. So how I try to I try introduce myself to students here in my Padlet, okay, uh, learning and teaching tools too. Okay, I try to be, you know, friendly and easily accessible to them. See, I give them my phone number, I don't mind. If they have problem, they can just WhatsApp or contact me personally and I will try to answer them. So this is in the, uh, also my Padlet. When they ask question, I try to answer them, okay. Uh, and then this is in uh, Instagram, okay. I try to be, uh, you know, uh, yeah, interact with student. So this is uh, untuk, uh, wishes for their yeah, examination, final exam. And also, uh, this one is the feedback from student. Okay, when instructors connect with their student, they build rapport in their classroom and foster student engagement in the learning process. Okay, engagement is very important. Why? Okay, because you can see here, learning is fun, engagement is the key. Okay, why we, we must have a fun learning? Because, okay, our brains are 68% more active when we are having fun. So the chances to the student to uh, understand better is higher, okay? When they feel fun, okay? And they engage in the class. So that's why uh, I try to implement active learning, uh, which means that I engage students in teaching and learning process by discussing example with them. Uh, Okay, for my pengajian hudud and uh, fiqh adinaya class, actually it's, uh, it's not easy, it's hard for them to feel asleep because the example is very, uh, are very dramatic because we are learning about crime. So A, kill B using poison or whatsoever, student hardly fell asleep, okay, in that class. So other than that, uh, problem solving in the class, learning reflection, okay, after asynchronous class, I assign them uh, with learning reflection task and also exit survey. Exit survey means that we ask a uh, simple question uh, after each class or uh, at the end of the class just to know, yeah, understand. Okay, uh, by I also for this semester, I try to use, uh, I also use Kahoot. And before this, I didn't use Kahoot, but when I receive feedback from students who suggest me to use Kahoot because the student is very, you know, sometimes a student, uh, they keep quiet in class and sometimes I, I get angry because I, I feel like I'm talking to the wall. So I ask them and they keep quiet and then I, okay. Mm -hmm. So <laughs> that semester, last semester, the student suggest me, Doctor, why not you use Kahoot if the student is very quiet, okay? so. This semester, I use Kahoot as um, alternative for exit survey, okay? So, in the assessment process also, I uh, implement active learning to engage the student by uh, doing uh, them doing self-assessment and peer assessment. Okay, this is the, I miss the class in day one kuliah dua, uh, apium, okay? Okay, uh, so this is, um, Mo, how much time? Uh. Uh, I think, uh, I mean, uh, the time is uh, actually over, but okay. if you have a few minutes more, I mean, few slides more, maybe we can give you five minutes. Okay, is okay. Is that okay? All right. 
Okay, so this one is how I engage students eh, in uh, evaluation for their, uh, this is before the COVID-19 uh, outbreak in class. I use the sketchbook. Okay, so I paste this and I uh, distribute the stars to the audience. So they will uh, give marks to the presenters by uh, pasting the stars, one star. Whether they think uh, the presenter should get seven marks or nine marks or nine marks. And then I will choose the average mark. Okay, so I also provide feedback uh, space for them to for them to comment the presenter so see uh, it is good so they give a uh, positive feedback uh, for example you visualize your explanation if it's start to explain so they give suggestion to the presenter and all can uh, get benefit from this okay contohnya first presenter elaborate more points kurang eye contact uh, this is uh, feedback from the student to their friends yeah, who presented in the class before this, before the COVID, okay, after the COVID-19 pandemic outbreak, so I use uh, poll if and also I use poly, okay, for them to give a uh, suggestion uh, on uh, the marks eh, that should be given to the presenters. Okay, so uh, I think not much left uh, more, but I, okay, maybe I get one only, eh, ni. Feedback, pengalaman melakukan penilaian kendiri dan refleksi. Penilaian kendiri yang dilakukan membuatkan saya untuk lebih peka terhadap tugasan-tugasan yang diberi untuk memastikan semua tugasan itu telah disempurnakan. Semua tugasan yang dibuat akan dinilai oleh rakan-rakan lain. Kaedah ini secara tidak langsung sebenarnya memberi peluang kepada pelajar untuk saling bertukar pendapat tentang apa yang dipelajari dalam subjek ini because they have to uh, evaluate their, uh, their friends e-portfolio. So the case chosen, the case study chosen by your uh, friends is maybe not the same with your uh, case. So they learn from that. Okay. And also they feel um, motivated yeah, uh, when we apply the self-reflection as uh, self-assessment and peer assessment because they know clearly what they have to achieve and they do, the, uh, do that and they get good marks because they follow all the uh, the expectation uh, in the rubrics. Okay, so this is just the sejujurnya saya amat menyukai kaedah penilaian sebegini berbanding uh, penulisan kertas kerja mungkin juga sudah tiba masanya bagi subjek-subjek lain beralih kepada platform dan kaedah sebegini yang membolehkan pelajar berkongsi dapatan mereka selain aktiviti penulisan ringkas dan santai mengikut ketetapan pensyarah berbanding satu kertas kerja yang tulis panjang berjala namun entah apa-apa Fahaman pelajar daripadanya. Jadi, this is just your feedback. Okay. So, the last one, flexibility. Okay. Be stubborn about your goals and flexible about your methods. Sometimes you have problems to use uh, platform uh, MS Team. You can just uh, switch, okay, to uh, Google Meet or whatsoever about the schedule, about the teaching and learning strategies. You have to uh, be adaptive to change because the circumstances change okay uh, constantly and sometimes inevitably we have to change our uh, strategy also so feedback from students are uh, feedback feedbacks from students are very important to help us to uh, improve or alter uh, our course so this are uh, among the feedbacks that i got from students okay this one that i say that hanya segala cadangan daripada saya Jika doktor inginkan kelas lebih interaktif, mungkin sebab kadang-kadang pelajar berasa malu atau segan untuk menjawab soalan doktor dalam kelas dan ini sukar bagi doktor memastikan para pelajar memahami. Maka saya rasa doktor boleh menguji mereka dengan mengadakan permainan game seperti kahut sekali-sekala jika masa menginginkan dengan izin. Uh, okay, so I uh, take this suggestion I and I uh, did uh, the kahut for this semester. This one is uh, feedback from the last semester. Uh, student. Okay, untuk penambahbaikan, saya mencadangkan agar kelas secara bersemuka lebih banyak dijalankan. Okay, because she feel less motivated uh, uh, when I did the class asynchronously. Okay, so this is the response that I get in now eh, in MCO 3.0. So I say that, yeah, the situation change. Before this in MCO 1.0, the feedback that I got from student, they like if I, this uh, class uh, uh, recorded and they can uh, access to it uh, at any time. Uh, they have the uh, internet coverage. But at some time, the feedback is contradict, yeah? 
because this student she likes uh, the the style that I've done for this semester because I blend synchronous and synchronous. Uh, she like it. And so maybe we have to read all the uh, feedback from student and then we come out with uh, the best solution. I mean, in the middle, the middle situation uh, to celebrate all uh, the suggestion from student. So conclusion is that uh, actually in uh, conducting uh, online class, I try to utilize all knowledge and resources about teaching and learning. Okay, the first one, of course, outbreak outcome based learning. This is done in UM and we all know it very well. And then I try to uh, active learning, explore active learning, pedagogy, hypagogy, student centered learning, all this. And uh, special thanks to EDEC. Actually, I come out with all this, what I did in my class, and I got inspiration from uh, the speakers, yeah? previous speakers uh, during my teaching and learning course uh, organized by EDEC uh, two years ago, I think, and all the peak into uh, my class and also a briefing from EDEC uh, before this. That's all. Thank you for listening. Okay, thank you, Pan Umo. I'm done. All right, thank you, Dr. Shahidra. Uh, because the time is running uh, pretty fast, so maybe we can just uh, continue um, with Dr. Hadi. Dr. Hadi, are you ready? Uh, you are muted. <laughs> All right, the floor is yours. Something else. All right, sure. Okay. Alright, uh, Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh and a very good morning everyone. Um, so today what I'm going to showcase my peak to my class is about uh, what is called Adec. Uh, so this is our online course. Um, and uh, so this is the online course that we are going to conduct today. Uh, so the online course is about uh, teaching and learning based learning. Uh, so this is the online course that we are going to conduct today. So this is the online course that we are going to conduct today. So this is the online course that we are going to conduct today. So this is the online course that we are going to conduct today. So this is the online course that we are Okay, so um, as introduction, basic information, I'm sure everybody knows Spectrum. So I'm just going to skip on that. Um, PowerPoint presentation, of course, um, what I'm going to showcase today has a big relationship to um, PowerPoint. Okay, and um, the third one is Google Form, but I'm not sure if we have time because I do have something else going on at about 12. So I need to kind of like rush a little bit. And of course, because we have another speaker after this. Okay. So for Google Form, if we do have time, then um, we'll definitely go and showcase a little bit on how I actually use my Google Form um, during my teaching and learning. Otherwise, we'll just focus on uh, PowerPoint. So as you guys uh, might have noticed, so my style of teaching is by using two devices. Um, over here, I have my camera, or in this case, it's a laptop. And another one is I normally have an iPad where you, know, you can just scribble. So. Um, so take point, first take point for today is if you do have a device, um, tablet um, that you can use or, or any laptop that has, has a touch screen, then of course you can um, you know, use two devices or three devices for your teaching. Um, and by doing this, you, know, you, you can do a lot of things. For example, um, just write down a question, um, put a, a blank, and then um, during your teaching, you can just fill it in. Okay, so you don't have to have only, you know, PowerPoint and then you just go and next and next and next with all the animation and so on and so forth. So this is also related to what uh, Dr. Shahidra just mentioned. Um, you might want to have some engagement with the students. So in my case, when I provide my lecture notes to the students, they are always blank slides. Okay, either half of it blank or it's a totally blank slide, but it's there so that the student um, can actually engage and while I was doing my teaching, drawing something because I'm a chemist, okay, I'm from chemistry. So we use a lot of uh, drawings, uh, especially chemical drawings in our teaching. Therefore, having this blank pitch actually helps the student to actually copy. Um, so they won't just, you know, be listening to your lecture and then because you don't have to draw anything. So sometimes you can have a, a pre-drawn structure, right? Um, or, or pre-drawn sentences, uh, depending on where you are from. So I noticed that um, the students normally have issues by which they don't have they don't have enough time to actually copy the whole structure. So by having um, a blank space, and then you yourself as a, as a teacher draw the structure, 
So you will, you know, definitely make sure that the students have ample time to actually draw the structure itself. Of course, the structure is very ugly. Um, it's just a, a quick drawing. Okay, this is just an example. Okay. So uh, moving on to the next one. So um, spectrum, how I use it. Uh, of course, spectrum, the university asks us to use spectrum as our main mode of uh, platform. So you can use any other, uh, other platform, Teams, Google Classroom, and so on and so forth. But um, the university highly encourage everyone to use spectrum. So this is what, uh, uh, what I'm doing, okay? So even though I like to use um, Google Meet instead of Teams for my teaching and learning, so we always have everything back into um, be written in Spectrum, okay? And, and of course, because we have a WhatsApp group, most of the information being delivered to the students uh, via uh, WhatsApp. But always have a duplicate. Uh, that's how I do it. Um, anything that I have, even if I'm changing the um, classroom link, for example, so I'll definitely post it on uh, WhatsApp and also I will change the meeting link over here just in case if um, some student missed the information because you know whatsapp can be um you can have like multitudes of um sms's or texts okay all right so and um additionally instead of so i'm changing a format of um delivering this uh, continuous assessment results so normally what you do is you have a uh, word document for example with tables with students id and then grades so what I'm changing now is I'm using um, Google Sheet to actually um, let the student um, key in their own student ID and then from there they can see the results. So by doing this, well, one advantage of doing that is um, the grades are kind of like hidden uh, and more personalized. So if you, you know, normally some students, they, they like to keep the results to themselves. So this is my way of giving them a privacy to do to actually do that. So uh, if we do have time, then I will showcase um, about how I actually do it. Um, otherwise, we'll just focus on the PowerPoint. Okay. All right. So Spectrum is one thing. Uh, we have all the announcement. And for those who do not know, you can actually uh, put the QR code for your WhatsApp group or for any resources that you want on the right hand side or on the left-hand side of the uh, spectrum, depending on how the students and you yourself set your spectrum. So in my case, I set all my um, information, addition information on the right-hand side, and you can actually add this very, very easily. Um, perhaps if you do not know, then you can join in any of the uh, spectrum clinic that EDEC is um, organizing, okay? So you can actually touch and teach you guys how to actually do this, okay? And of course, um, all your teaching and learning, you um, must be related to Spectrum. And um, the university asks that we always have both style of teaching. So you need to have a synchronous and asynchronous. So in my department, we have decided to have a minimum of three synchronous lectures face-to-face. Uh, -face, and the rest of it, you can either do it, um, you can either add it in here, or the rest of it, you can just switch to asynchronous um, recordings. Um, I know this can be some, um, th there's two sides of a coin for, for this bit, because there are some students who like to have a face-to-face -face, um, synchronous lecture, and while some students actually like to have a pre-recorded lecture so that they can just view it on their own time, okay? So um, for today, I'm just gonna focus on synchronous because um, last week, or sorry, not last week, two weeks ago, uh, a clique of mine, Dr. Nashir Dane from uh, Spot Science, um, have touched about um, using H5P for asynchronous lecture. So for those who actually might be interested in looking at H5P, you can, um, I think, contact Umu or uh, scroll down on the 16th of July, okay, and look for Dr. Nashir Dane. Um, he had a little bit of presentation um, about H5P. All right, so um, synchronous lecture. So normally what you have is you have an introduction to your lecture, right? So you have, in my case, my introduction was about Spectrum, a little bit about PowerPoint and Google Form. And then of course, you need to have your body, your, the content of the, the teaching. So in this case, I will just show the slide that I've showed you guys just now, okay, a little bit. And then towards the end, you normally have a thank you slide, 
uh, where you might add in some references about the lectures and so on and so forth. Okay. Now, I'm not going to talk about the conclusion. I'm not going to talk about the introduction, but I'm just going to touch a little bit on what you can add um, for the body. So the first one that I mentioned is normally when I have my, my class, I will have a blank page where the student can scribble. So this is a, an alternative way that um, I started using this semester and this feedback from the students so far are excellent and they really liked it. Okay, so this is another form of engagement um, during your teaching um, and learning. All right, so this is it. Uh, if you have used it, then um, congratulations. Um, I'm pretty sure your students like it. If you have not used it, you might want to use it and I will show you guys on how to actually um, set this up in your PowerPoint, okay? So an example of what I have here is what do you want to know about Spectrum? So this is an engagement and all of you guys who are here, if you want to participate, you can go to this link over here, okay? So you can use any devices, you can use your laptop, if you use a tablet, you can just use a tablet or if you have your phone, okay? So just simply take your phone and then key it in. You just key in polf.com forward slash hadi for art 049. Okay, and then um, you will see similar question like this. Okay, um, while doing that, I'll just um, do it on my own. And if you guys want to join in, be my guest, um, just grab your phone, key in um, the link over there, and then you will see what will happen. So Hadi Fuad 049. Okay. So you, you first have a, a welcoming page, oops, a welcoming page. Um, you can just skip if you don't want to put your name, but what's important is what is observed on my slide is now being reflected on my phone, okay? Imagine if you are a student, so this is your slide as the uh, lecturer, and you can have your student to actually open up their phone and engage. And what you'll see is that straight away, uh, because I, I typed in engage, so that's why you can see engage. Okay, so um, imagine in your class where you have um, students and you want them to engage. So what I can do is, uh, can I have everyone who are actually listening to go to this web address? There you go, we have someone else uh, putting in assignment, okay? So those are the things that you can do and not only putting in uh, familiar keywords, you can do a lot of other things um, using this uh, poll everywhere um, add-on for your uh, PowerPoint. Okay, so um, I was hoping that more people will actually join in, but that, uh, that's fine. I'm just trying to uh, catch, uh, to, to push the lecture so that it will finish earlier. Okay, um, so you can have, say, for example, quiz. Um, having, you know, give, it, give the students an option A, B, C, and D, um, and ask the students, can I have everyone to open their uh, devices, go to this web address, and then quickly um, answer the poll. Okay, so that you can see all the poll. You can have images. For example, last time um, when I was teaching about COVID-19, I put a world map of, of the world, the, the world map, and I asked the student where did COVID-19 um, started from. Okay, so there are some students who, who picked China, where different parts of China, there are students who actually um, put in Africa, but you know, um, it's, it's one style of engagement to the students and um, uh, a feedback from a student, of course, I don't have a screenshot um, that I can share with you guys over here, but uh, some students say that it's very engaging um, and keeps them focused during lectures because they know at one point of the lecture, um, Dr. Hadi will show a slide by which they need to participate. Okay, so that's, that's one way uh, to actually um, use it in your um, spectrum. Okay, um, I've already did that, so I'll just skip. Okay, so what are the requirements to have uh, this feature? Um, it's fine, you can have a Mac or a PC as long as you have a PowerPoint installed, then you can actually use this. And um, of course, uh, I didn't write it here, but you need to use your UM um, ID, you know, UM Microsoft ID to actually um, use this feature. You might have a Microsoft ID previously, either using Hotmail or um, in my case, when I was doing my undergraduate, uh, my university provide me with a, a Microsoft ID. Uh, but unfortunately, 
um, it needs subscription. And as a lecturer, definitely we can use this very, very easily. Um, as long as you log in using your UMID for all your office, um, your Word, PowerPoint, and so on and so forth, you can use this feature. Okay. So having the most updated PowerPoint is a bonus because I noticed that if you are using the very old uh, PowerPoint, you don't have this add-in feature, but the newer ones, um, you, you will not have any issue. Okay, so you can register for a free education account um, on polleverywhere.com, but it's only limited to 40 participants. So um, you can see here, so this is what I'm registering for because normally my class is not as big as uh, some of you guys, so you might have more than 40. But in my case, um, normally in, in one cohort, we only have about 50 students uh, maximum. So normally it's around 40-ish. And you you don't want to, you know, when, while you are uh, posting the question, you don't want to spend too much time um, and wait for everyone to actually answer the post. Okay? You might say, I'll give you guys one minute to actually try and see uh, if you understand about this topic. So you just wait for about one minute um, while, you know, talking a little bit or asking you guys, uh, asking the students to actually go back to the website, key this in and so on and so forth. So for me, 40 is enough for you to have a feedback um, during a lecture. Okay, but of course, if you have a bigger class, then you might want to choose differently. And um, if the university, if, if a lot of us are actually using this, uh, we might actually, we, we probably can ask the university to actually, um, you know, allow us uh, a, a free version uh, for the university pay the subscription for us and we can just use it um, in all our teaching and learning, provided that it is still um, an online teaching. But then again, you can still use this. Um, say, for example, COVID ends, we went back to our original way by using PowerPoint and a projector. Okay, you can still have this and at least you can still have the students engage in your class. Okay, so it's it's I would say this is a win-win situation uh, with or without COVID. Okay, so you create a poll as questionnaires in PowerPoint. I will show you guys um, soon and a live feedback as uh, I've shown previously. And of course, um, it's a happy thing for everyone who actually joined in. Okay, um, asynchronous, as I mentioned, um, H5P is one of the ways by which you can have an engagement with the students. So you can just refer to uh, Pink to My Class, it's in July by Dr. Nash uh, And Of course, um, I think at that posted, I've actually covered the same thing, H5P, um, last year in May when COVID just started. So you can always go back to EDEC website and I'm hoping that you can actually find this information. Otherwise, I'm happy to, um, for you guys, oops. Not that one yet. Oh, that's the last slide. So I'm happy for you guys to actually um, email me if you need any more clarification or any more information. And of course, since um, we, everyone is at home, extension is not working. Um, otherwise, that's my extension if you want to contact me. All right. Um, so what I'm going to do now is I'm going to switch my presentation from uh, my device to my PC because it will be easier to set up the um, questionnaires. Okay. All right, so um, that's the PowerPoint. All right, so this is what you do. So um, if you have a PowerPoint like this, um, you what you need to look for under insert is um, my add-ins like this. Okay, and if you can see uh, from this PC or from this Mac, I have uh, nothing because I want to show to you guys on how to actually use it. So it's it's very easy, it's very straightforward. You just click on add in, either you click on that or click on the small um, arrow icon. And then just simply search um, goal everywhere. Hopefully it came out, otherwise I need to um, Okay, so it's that, all right? So pull everywhere. So this is what I'm using. Um, there are any other options. You can use forms. Um, last time when I used this, it was not really um, fully embedded yet in PowerPoint. So I have yet to check whether it is still now better, but you can actually use this. It's pretty much the same thing, but forms are rather free, but pull everywhere. I'm using it because um, 
anyone can can actually engage with it, uh, regardless of where you are. Um, as long as you are um, looking at the lectures as a live lecture, then you can um, use this. OK, so um, first thing that you need to do is you need to sign in. Um, so you use your Microsoft account. Let me see if I can remember my password. Okay, and if you notice, it's using the Microsoft. Uh, it's not our normal UM mail, so you need to have the Microsoft um, Microsoft dash UM mail where you have um, your username Elias three six five dot um dot edu dot mine. Okay, um, so the first thing you need to log in, and then um, you need to kind of like allow the program to uh, access your account. Should be opening. It didn't open. Okay, there you go. Okay, so it should open. It, it will go to polleverywhere.com. So this is where you need to have your registered account first. If you have not registered, then um, you need to register. But in my case, because I have registered, so I can just simply sign in. And then from there, you can have like a library of um, questions. Okay. All right, so I'm just taking some time to actually showcase this and then because this is recorded, uh, recorded. So um, if in case in the future you want to use this, then you can always go back and see how what is the process um, that I'm using to actually see this. All right. So um, so this is a bug from the website. You don't have to wait. Uh, you can just go back and check on your PowerPoint that you created just now. Now from here, you can actually see I have a few folders. And on top of that, I do have the um, questions that I've prepared. OK, so if I go back to edX, then this is the question that um, I have posted just now. OK, so the ones that I've asked, what have you used? What components of Spectrum have you used? Um, otherwise, you can just create a new activity like this. And then from here, you can actually see a lot of other features. You can have multiple choice. Word cloud, the one that I've used just now was word cloud. You can have a true and false. You can have um, image and so on and so forth. So uh, you can just explore and you know help yourself. Um, and hoping that helping yourself and then to the other day you can help your students. Okay, and then from there you can um, activate. Um, this is an example. Okay, um, and of course you can. Over here, you can tick what is the correct answer. OK. Save. And then this is what the student will see. If you um, do a PowerPoint presentation, OK, so um, you will see this. And of course, um, the student will not see this straight away. OK, what you need to do is you need to go to um, your Oops, what happened to my mouse? Oh, because it's in presentation. Okay. Sorry, some issue here. My mouse is missing. <laughs> okay, so what you need to do is you need to go into Paul everywhere over here and then uh, click on, if I can find my mouse, click on the question. Okay. And then you need to activate. You can see over here. Um, oh God, what happened? My mouse is missing. I'll probably just stop presenting first and then redo the presentation. Mouse is still missing. Oh, technical issue here. Um, I apologize for this. Um, let me just try go back. Ah, that's why I have a back. A backup. My backup is actually um, let me see if I can go in here. Um, am I in the correct room? No. Okay. Because there's two rooms in Microsoft Teams. Sorry about that. Uh, this is why I always have multiple devices. 
Okay. All right, now I'm transfer myself to my desktop. Okay, so um, what you need to do next is um, when you go into this slide, okay, you, you can see this icon. So this icon activates what question you want to post to the students. Okay, in this case, um, this is an example is already activated. So if you go back to pull everywhere and then key in my name again, then you will see that um, the question now the question now is changed to the question that I've presented, okay? Uh, whereby you have the options and so on and so forth. So that's that's one way to do it. So um, say, for example, if you have multiple questions that you want to put in into your um, PowerPoint presentation, you need to have another PC or another device, or you can have the same device that you can move through back and forth to actually activate the question, okay? So you can see here, I have seven responses from the first um, poll everywhere, the second one, we have nothing yet, okay? Uh, but that's, that's, that's just an example, okay? Um, I think that it's all from me. Um, it's a very short um, sharing session. Uh, I hope that um, if not everyone, some of you guys uh, will benefit from this. So thank you and uh, back to you. Um, Puan Umu. Thank you Dr. Hadi. Uh, since Dr. Hadi will be leaving soon, perhaps if you have any question for Dr. Hadi, uh, you can just unmute your mic and um, deliver your question now. Any question from the participants? Uh, all right, okay. Um, so far, no. Okay. Uh, hello. Hello, uh, excuse hi. me. Uh, Assalamualaikum. Uh, hello. I'm here, uh, Dr. Hadi. Uh, May I know, is there any limits on uh, the number of polls that we can create a uh, poll everywhere? Like, uh, like form, if, like Microsoft form, if I'm not mistaken, uh, using the UM365 uh, account is something uh, around 200 plus. So do you, do you know any, any limitation, the number of uh, polls that you can create using polls everywhere? Um, so far, I've been using it for um, all my lectures and um, I can still use it. Um, so I have no idea. Yeah. Um, <laughs> but the, the number of limitation that uh, I've read when, when you subscribe and whatnot is the, the limitation in the number of participants per poll if you are using the free education version. I see. All right. Yeah. Okay. But the number you. of questions itself, um, well, for now, I have a lot, I would say, um, and I can still use it, but of course, it's not 200 yet because I just started using it this semester. All right. Uh, thank you, Dr. Hadi. So um, can we now invite Dr. Chong um, to uh, share with us um, her uh, teaching and learning tips? Dr. Chong, are you ready? Uh, yes, uh, Madam Umu, I'm ready. Can you hear me? Can you all hear me? Yes, yeah. I oh, can yeah. hear you very clearly. Okay. Um, right. First of all, I'd like to uh, thank uh, ADAC uh, for inviting me uh, to uh, be a speaker of this sharing section. And uh, yeah, thank you, uh, Madam uh, Umu, uh, for the, I mean, uh, for facilitating uh, this uh, session. Yeah. Um, so I, my presentation uh, won't have a uh, uh, many uh, what uh, very interesting uh, things that the first and second speaker share because uh, for my teaching I don't I don't use uh, many uh, what uh, new new programs. Uh, so um, first of all, I would like to uh, mention that. Uh, yeah, since the pandemic, that means since our teaching uh, had uh, gone fully uh, online, uh, I have been uh, using Spectrum and Microsoft Teams uh, as my main mode of uh, teaching. So uh, maybe, um, first of all, uh, let me share my uh, spe uh, Spectrum page. And, and uh, by the way, uh, I don't have any PowerPoint slides uh, to share, but I'm going to uh, share my Spectrum page and also uh, the uh, Microsoft Teams page for my classroom. So first of all, let me uh, share screen first. Okay, can you all see my Spectrum page? Yes, we can see. All right, thank you. 
So uh, this is the spectrum page of uh, one of the courses that I I handle for this semester. That means uh, semester two of this session. Now, since my class was conducted in Microsoft Teams. So bef even before my first lecture, um, when the students had uh, registered for for this course and they, they could already uh, access the Spectrum page for this course, then I post a very, uh, an important announcement here, uh, informing them that uh, they have to they have to install Microsoft Teams because the lecture will be conducted via Microsoft Teams and also I give them the link, the link of the classroom on the Microsoft Teams. So that's why I put this uh, announcement uh, on the top. Okay. So all the teaching, uh, all the teaching materials uh, like my PowerPoint slides and also uh, the main reading materials I've uploaded uh, before my first lecture and of course from time to time I will add on uh, the references uh, because uh, this course is about political development in Southeast Asia so politics uh, always have many new things so if there are any uh, new stuff related to the topics that uh, I cover then from time to time I will add on uh, the references and then I will inform my students and remind them to, to read those references. And uh, I also yeah, posted links, YouTube, YouTube uh, clip links uh, on topics related to, yeah, to my lectures. And uh, before the pandemic, before the pandemic, uh, when I conduct my classes, uh, I mean physically, uh, I will always uh, show the YouTube videos uh, in class. And then uh, after that, uh, I will discuss with my students. But unfortunately, uh, since the pandemic, and also because uh, some of our students just don't have good internet access at their places. So it's uh, uh, it was very, uh, inconvenient for me to show the YouTube videos live uh, via Microsoft Teams. Uh, they complained that uh, there were uh, serious laggings and also they could not hear the sound, uh, etc. So since the pandemic, I, uh, what I have to do is that I ask them to, to uh, watch the YouTube videos um, during their I mean, after the lecture, and then in the next lecture, we discuss discuss together the topics uh, of the videos. So I think, um, and for my tutorial, this is how I conduct my uh, tutorial. So let me show uh, you all uh, my tutorial one. So usually um, for my tutorial, I will post a question after my lecture and I ask the student to to answer to answer in the forum before uh, the tutorial session, so that during the tutorial session uh, we we can discuss together. Yeah, and uh, I also want to uh, highlight another point is that the in terms of the format of my tutorial session, I okay sorry. Uh, just want to show you all the setting. My apologies. Now, I always set the type of my tutorial session uh, to Q&A. Uh, I always uh, set it at uh, the Q&A forum uh, format because uh, with this format, students must answer my tutorial question before they can see their friends' answers. So, um, I mean, this is a, a way to uh, sort of 
uh, encourage them or motivate them to answer my tutorial question. Now, uh, by the way, the tutorial uh, questions are not counted in my continuous assessment. For my continuous assessment, I have uh, other tasks for them uh, to do. So, namely, uh, uh, yeah, for this course, I give them uh, the first task actually is the online test. So uh, I I give them one question. Uh, for instance, uh, this is the yeah this is the online test question. So they have to read an article uh, uh, published on BBC on the BBC website, and then they answer this question. And and the answer will be uh I mean uh, a turn it in check will be conducted automatically uh, once they uploaded their their answer. So this is uh, their first first continuous assessment task. The second one is uh, their re learning reflection. So for their learning reflection. I request them to answer it on forum. That means I post my question on forum. And this is uh, compulsory, compulsory for all students to answer because 20 marks will be given. So I put it under week 14. I put it under week 14 because uh, learning reflections uh, is more suitable to for, for them to share their learning reflections after I mean, uh, after learning all the, the topics that I covered. Okay, so now I would like to share uh, the Microsoft Teams page uh, for my classroom. So let me stop share first. Then we'll share again. Okay, can you all see the Microsoft Teams page for my course? Uh, yes, we can see. OK, thank you. So uh, yeah, this is the Microsoft Teams page for uh, the course that uh, I, one of the courses that I taught, the same as uh, the, the course in the Spectrum page that I just show. So for every, for every lecture and tutorial session, I, uh, I have separate classrooms so that it's easier for me to monitor their attendance and also to uh, yeah, to record their attendance. And all the sessions are recorded. Now, um, I noticed that if uh, I recorded the, the sessions, I have to download it after the session and then upload it again uh, in Microsoft Teams, then only my students were able to access. So now uh, let me show you all uh, what I've uploaded on Microsoft Teams under files. So sorry, uh, the loading is a bit slow. OK, so um, these are the videos of my uh, lectures and tutorial sessions that are recorded and then downloaded and uploaded under files. So students just have to uh, click on the link, then uh, they will be able to uh, watch again, watch again uh, the classes that I conducted. OK, let me go back to Post. Now, um, just now, I um, yeah, just now I mentioned that uh, if I recorded, I recorded uh, my uh, lectures or tutorial sessions, and then just leave it as it is. Then students uh, come. I mean, students uh, told me that they, they could not access. So I actually, I have no idea why. For instance, that, that this is one example. So uh, uh, 
So this is so this is uh, a lecture that I myself recorded, but uh, uh, but then I have to uh, download it and then upload it again under files. Then only students uh, are able to access. But if the videos are recorded by one of the students, then uh, other students can access it after that. That means uh, I don't have to download it and re-upload it. Students uh, can access it automatically. So for instance, uh, let me show you. Let me show you uh, this uh, video, recorded video of my last lecture. So for, for this last lecture, uh, during that time, uh, we no longer, we, we, are, we were no, no longer allowed to go back to our office uh, to work. We have to uh, work from home. Um, so because my, uh, my data is so limited, if I want to download, record, download and re-upload again, then uh, I will have, uh, I mean, my data won't be enough. So what I did was I asked one of my students to record uh, my lecture and then after that I ask other students to yeah to uh, just click on click on the video and all of them managed to uh, access the video uh, so for I mean for this matter I uh, just have no idea why lecture we lecturers if we record our uh, lectures we have to download it and upload it, then only students will be able to access. But I mean, if one of the students record the lecture, then they don't have to go, they don't have to take additional procedures. I mean, if one student record, then other students can uh, automatically can access it without, without uh, any problem. So for this, this matter, I have no idea. Maybe this is the setting of Microsoft Teams. Okay, so now let me stop share. Okay, so uh, yeah, basically like what I said, uh, I don't use uh, many uh, new programs uh, for my teaching, uh, but uh, I always emphasize uh, that um, it is very important to have uh, interactivity with students. Uh, I mean, to be frank, during MCO1, um, because I was still not familiar with conducting uh, my lectures and tutorials uh, live. So most of my lectures and tutorial sessions during MCO1 uh, actually were all pre-recorded. Ah. And then after that, uh, some students frankly told me that they felt demotivated. Ah. Uh, and they uh, prefer uh, have prefer uh, having more live uh, classes. Um, that's why um, since the I mean since uh, the first semester this session that means uh, uh, since the beginning of this year I decided to uh, have uh, most of my uh, classes conducted um, live, but at the same time. I make sure that every class was recorded so that those students who did not have good internet uh, connections and hence uh, could not join the class conducted live, uh, at least they uh, could still have opportunities to access the videos of classes uh, after that. Um, and I, I found that by uh, conducting uh, classes live, yeah, students, they uh, Feel more motivated. Uh, they are more um, positive in uh, actively participating uh, in my classes. Yeah. So, because um, we, we don't know how long we have to do this, and uh, we really need to uh, pay uh, attention to students' uh, motivation to learn. So, students' feedback, um, we, we need to 
we need to take note of students' feedback and also at the same time uh, make sure that uh, those uh, without good internet uh, connections will be able to access access the class videos I mean uh, after the sessions and uh, yeah so just uh, my final note is that um, if we notice that uh, students, I mean, any particular students who always uh, never turn up for classes, then we really need to uh, follow up with them. Um, some students, they always absent uh, mainly because, just because they don't have internet uh, connections. But some students, uh, they they were absent because, because of depression, because I did heard, I, I did hear of a, a a number of students um, who, who just feel very depressed because of the lockdown and I think uh, at some point we lecturers we really need to interfere uh, because this is part of the students well-being okay so I think yeah uh, that's all for my uh, sharing today um, so uh, I would like to thank you again uh, Adek, and thank you everyone uh, for listening to my uh, sharing so, uh, Madam Umu, back to you. Thank you. Thank you, Dr. Wong. Uh, uh, thank you, Dr. Chang. Sorry. Uh, do we have any questions from the participants? Hello, Dr. Chong. Hi. I'm Dr. Rusty from Faculty uh, of Medicine from Sakati. I was uh, shocked to hear that you mentioned uh, some students they are not uh, in because of uh, they feeling depressed. May I know how many percentage of them are uh, uh, under this category? Uh, sorry, uh, Dr. Rusty, right? So, uh, so um, yeah. yeah, sorry, can you repeat again your question? I sorry, I could not hear clearly. Uh, you, you mentioned this now, some of the students they, they are not in, in, in the class because of the they are, they are feeling depressed. May I know how many percentage of them is like this? How many percentage? Well, uh, from the students whom I uh, I, I, I know uh, is uh, about five percent or less. Uh, even though it's less, but I mean, if we have one or two students who are deeply depressed, then uh, it's it's a problem that. Uh, we, uh, I mean, lecturers uh, really need to uh, uh, do something. But um, one thing my faculty had already uh, been doing is that uh, some time ago, my faculty, uh, namely Faculty of Arts and Social Sciences, had actually set up a special task force. Um, the special task force is made up of uh, 10 lecturers uh, who had um, who are well trained in counseling and, uh, psych and psychotherapy. So they... Uh, uh, I, I, I mean, according to uh, the announcement about the task force, any students in my faculty who feel depressed and need to talk to someone, they can contact any of the lecturers in the task force. Uh, their mobile numbers are stated uh, in the announcement in my uh, faculty's website. And um, as far as I know, this announcement was also uh, emailed to uh, all students in my faculty. And in fact, uh, during my lecture, I also share uh, the information with my students. Uh, I mean, I uh, told them that if uh, you yourself or if uh, any of your friends in our faculty uh, feel depressed and uh, want to to talk to uh, an expert, expert in psychology or counselling, then don't hesitate to to contact any of the lecturers in the task force. Um, I I'm not part of that task force because I never received any training in counselling or psychotherapy. Uh, but the ten lecturers from different departments, uh, they they will train train in that uh, area. So um, yeah. So so far, this this is what my faculty and I myself have uh, yeah have been doing uh, to make sure that students who experience depression because of the pandemic and lockdown at least they know they know who to who to talk. Yeah. So maybe uh, Dr. Rusty, um, 
faculty of medicine, uh, the, the faculty of medicine have any other uh, suggestion or recommendation for these students? Uh, we, we are in psychological medicine uh, in CPUM. Uh, we, we have this walking clinic where maybe uh, the teachers or the patient or the student themselves can actually just walk in to our uh, uh, psychiatric walk-in clinic. Uh, we open up uh, every day from 8 to 10 o'clock in the morning. Mm -hmm. They can just walk in without any appointment. To, to oh, just, day, just uh, walk in. Um, yeah. Okay, and what about students who are not in the Klang Valley? That means they are in their hometown, but that, that means... Uh, they can also go to uh, any, any of the uh, government hospitals. Uh, but I'm not sure uh, in Gormong whether they have this walk-in clinic or not. Maybe they have to do uh, appointment first. Uh, they will be given dates for coming and see. But uh, in CPUM, they have this walk-in clinic. Uh, they can come and they, they will be seen on that day. Mm -hmm. But they must come early, like, before 10 o'clock in the morning. Oh, before 10 o'clock. Uh, yeah. So our okay. clinic is better at the complex psychiatry. Uh, ground, uh, so it's very really easy. Just come early in the morning, walk in, and they can be seen uh, as soon as possible uh, with our psychiatric uh, medical of the long call. Okay. All right. Thank you, Dr. Rusty, for this very important information. Um, do we have any other question for? Dr. Chong or um, any of our speakers? All right, if there's no question, I guess we can end it here. Thank you, Dr. Shahidra, Dr. Hadi, and Dr. Chong for the insightful sharing session. So perhaps uh, our participants today can benefit a bit or a lot um, to to implement in their uh, online class session in the future. All right. Uh, thank you, everyone. Uh, we have um, feedback form for you to fill it up. So um, I will post again the link. That is highly appreciated so that we can improve um, further on our future training. Thank you.